How do the how do the pups like living on the East Coast? Uh, well, we still live in the hotel, so they're kind of like in heaven because they get a lot of attention. Um, it's like living it. It's like take your kid to work day every day. Every it's day. like every time we go for a walk, they go to accounting and they go to see the front desk and they yep. go to see this. So it's like they really like it. My mom told me when I moved back to uh, an apartment, they're going to be like, take us back to the palace, you know? Happy New Year and welcome to another episode of Perspectives. My name is Kevin Gemmel. I'm the senior content writer here at Chefworks. And today we're gonna walk through a little bit of fire and we're going to take you to hell because our guest is Chef Amber Lancaster who is appearing this week on the new season of Hell's Kitchen which debuts on Thursday. Chef, thanks so much for joining us on Perspectives. Now, I know that you've been on a lot of cooking competitions before, you've been on TV before. How does Hell's Kitchen rate? What's the intensity level like on this particular show? The intensity level is something that I am not even sure I can put into words, but I definitely think there is a reason that I understand 100% now why they call it Hell's Kitchen. So, Chef, you and I have known each other for a couple of years now. I've interviewed you a couple times before. You are a pretty fearless person. You love a good competition. You don't shy away. How does that compare with the personality of Chef Gordon Ramsay, who has really built his reputation on being, let's just say, very critical of the people he worked with? How did that personal those personalities mesh? Uh, I think they meshed well, but uh, just like any other tough European chef, he kind of doesn't tolerate uh, crap. So, <laughs> you know, he's, he's intense, but rightfully so, and... Um, it was really uh, a pleasure to be able to cook, you know, for him on a regular basis and, and very inspiring. He's, he's a really amazing chef. Now, you've been an executive chef in Chicago, an executive chef on the East Coast. One of the big surprises of this year's season, though, is that you guys ended up in Las Vegas. How did that all come together? And what, what's the food scene like in Vegas? What did, what's the vibe there? Yeah, we, we, we had no idea. It was definitely a total shocking surprise um, to get off the plane and, and be in Vegas and then stay in Vegas. Um, so that was really a big plot twist right off the bat to, you know, just to keep you on your toes uh, for the start of season 19 and keep it exciting and fresh. Um, but the food scene in Vegas, there's a lot of high profile talent. So it was really, um, you know, it's really kind of like, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's exactly like being in New York City, but it's similar because of the talent that is there in all of the big hotels. You just have so much, you know, phenomenal food around you that, you know, it, it kind of puts, uh, puts the fire below you, you know? All right, so let's go from the heat of uh, the desert in Las Vegas out to New Jersey and the East Coast. Give us a rundown of what you're doing now, Chef. Yeah, so I'm at the MC Hotel in Montclair. We have two restaurants here. We've got Alta Rooftop, which overlooks all of New York City skyline. It's beautiful. And then we've got our restaurant Allegory, where you can come for breakfast, lunch, dinner, brunch, um, and have any of my full menus there. The town is really beautiful, great place for vacationing. Uh, I feel very lucky to be here in Montclair. Now you're a multi-time winner on shows like Guy's Grocery Games. You've gone up against Iron Chefs like Alex Cornichelli. Did you ever imagine that you were going to be on television when you got into this whole cooking thing back when you were originally a student at the University of Arizona? Uh, I did not. I actually, even to this day, I am terrified being on television. <laughs> I, you know, my palms get sweaty. I'm totally nervous. I say weird things that I don't really actually say in real life. But once the camera turns on, I just, you know, the competitive nature in me starts and I just, I do what I love to do, which is cook. And I just kind of go right for it. You know, I don't want to, um, it's not that I don't want to be a loser. Of course, I don't want to be a loser, but it's more like I don't want to let anybody down and I want to show everybody what I've got and what I love. Well, I think you're doing fantastic, by the way, with the camera on you right now, but we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to do a little bit of rapid fire. So I want to do kind of some, some first and things that come to your head, all right? First off, best movie of all time that involves a chef? 
Uh, Ratatouille or Julie and Julia. Best holiday dessert. Bouche de Noel. Most overrated delicacy. Caviar. When you're cooking in the kitchen, music, yes or no, and if yes, what are you listening to? Yes, and depends on the mood of my team. We take requests, and most recently, it's been a mix of Fleetwood Mac and Metallica. Oh, that's, a, that's a wide range there. You can go a lot of different directions. And then what's We have your, a lot of different moods in the kitchen right now. <laughs> what's your New Year's resolution? Oh gosh, I didn't even think about this one. New Year's resolution, uh, I think we gotta pass. Okay, fair enough. If you're gonna pass, you gotta pass. To that one, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you know, tell everybody I have this resolution and not follow through. It does become official once it is on the ChefWorks channel. That's just how things work here. Um, Everybody's gonna know. Well, let me ask you this then. What are some of your hopes for 2021? My hopes for 2021 are to continue to support everyone in this industry as much as possible and continue to do what I feel like everyone in our industry already does on a regular basis, which is adapt and, and grow and challenge and support each other. So, um, you know, the world is changing more than ever. And so I think it's really important that we continue to thrive and figure out how we're going to do that in this new direction that everybody's moving. And then chef, I always like to end these on sort of a fun note. What is your best culinary memory? Oh God, my best culinary memory. I think right now, just because I'm, I, we just experienced our first big snowstorm here, um, was when, and, and I think we've maybe discussed this one before, but it is fresh in my mind again, because it brings my heart back to how I ended up in this industry in the first place which was when I stood in a blizzard outside of Alenia for five days to get a job there. And mm -hmm. everyone who worked there laughed at me and told me I would never get a job. And I stood outside every day with my knives, ready to do it. And that was it. Grant told me to come back. And I still, every time I think about that, you know, it just kind of tears up my heartstrings. It actually kind of gives me goosebumps too, because I've heard you tell me that story three or four times now, and it, it, it never gets old. Uh, chef, Best of luck on Hell's Kitchen. We cannot wait to see you. We're so excited. And thank you again so much for joining us on Perspectives. Happy New Year to you and yours. Yeah, thank you for having me. My thanks again to Chef Amber Lancaster for joining us on Perspectives, and we're all excited to watch her on Thursday on Hell's Kitchen. Now, if you like what you saw, please make sure you subscribe to the ChefWorks YouTube channel because you might see a little bit more of Chef Amber there because she has been on some of our other original programming, which includes Art of the Ingredient and uh, Sound Bites. Now, if you want to learn more about Chef, you can follow the text below to blog.chefworks.com. There you'll find her feature where she was previously a chef of ChefWorks, along with other stories about the culinary and hospitality industry. So for everyone here at ChefWorks and Perspectives, we want to wish you a healthy and happy new year. Until next time, eat well, drink well, and be well.